Math 3 Lesson Summary Video Circular Reasoning This lesson is a practice understanding task, which takes concepts you have been working on and applies them to new situations. The purpose of this lesson is to review and practice theorems and formulas associated with circles. In the following diagram, the radius of D is 5 centimeters and F is the midpoint of AE. Segments GE and GA are tangent to circle D. The measures of arc EB and arc BC are given on the diagram. Find the measures of all other unmarked angles, arcs, and segments. So the purpose of this task is to make us use all of the rules that we've been working on for the past three days to help us to find all of the missing parts of this circle. We need to think back to what we've learned about central angles, inscribed angles, circumscribed angles, segments with chords and tangents and secants, and try to put them all together. Part of that challenge is being able to recognize what everything is inside the picture. I always want to start by marking my given information. So I do know that the radius of circle D is five centimeters. So that would tell me anything that goes from D to a point on the circle should be five. So DA is going to be five, BD is going to be five, ED is going to be five. And right now that's all the segments that I have that I know are five. I also know that F is the midpoint of AE. So by definition of a midpoint, I know that I end up with two congruent pieces. So whatever EF ends up being equal to, AF is going to be equal to the same thing. Segments GE and GA are tangents. So we do know that these are tangent segments which means any of the radii that go to those points of tangency are creating 90 degree angles. So far, so good. Now we wanna look at some of the other information that's given to us. If we have a 40 degree arc, then its central angle, the angle at the center also has to be 40 degrees. And if here I have a 60 degree arc, this is an inscribed angle. And we know that inscribed angles are always half of its intercepted arc. So it must be 30 degrees. Now, we also want to remember, we've learned lots of rules since we started math. And inside of this circle, there are an awful lot of triangles. So using some of our triangle rules would probably help us out too. For example, triangle EDB has two sides that are equal to five. That makes it an isosceles triangle. I know if I have two equal sides, I also have two equal angles. And if I have two equal angles, and I only have 140 degrees left over between them, that means that they must be 70 degrees each. This is the process that you're gonna to need to go through to finish the rest of this task. The point of it is to make you struggle some, but to go back and reference all of your rules. You're constantly building off of anything that you find each time. Each time you find another piece of information, it's going to lead you to another piece of information. You may end up having to use triangle rules, you may have to use just angle rules. We don't want to forget vertical angles. And we also want to remember all of our circle and arc rules.